muted. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Jared. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me. I had muted. Um, oh, I can hear you now. Okay, great. Um, Sorry, I'm hearing him on the headset. <laughs> so um, as I was saying before, what, what does that mean from a practical perspective? That means, for example, we have a midterm in this class. It is completely open. You can use any textbook. You can use any internet you want. The only constraint is that you cannot communicate with anyone else, OK? And my philosophy here is not necessarily to penalize you on something you don't know or some equation you didn't memorize or whatever. But I want to understand that you are able to think about the problem to find the equation or find the resources. Or eventually, when you work in teams, go call up the expert or email the expert. That's the skill I want you to get at the end of the semester. Okay, so that's one big difference that that I, that might be from traditional engineering classes. And, and I'm saying this because I, when I took engineering, I'm, I'm an engineering graduate as well. I, I didn't have a class like this. So that's one big difference. The second big difference is that the second half of the semester, we will focus not exclusively, but significantly on entrepreneurship. What does that mean? That means um, I, you will, and we'll go through it in, in, in great detail, not great detail, some detail today. You're going to work in teams. Those of you who are in the uh, IBC or online sections will be in teams within that cohort. Those of you who are here in person will be in this cohort. And the teams, typically there are three to four students and you're gonna work almost like a small startup. You're going to identify a problem and that's going to be the first assignment or the second assignment, let's say. And then you're going, uh, third assignment, sorry. And, and then you're going to innovate to try to solve that problem based on what you've learned. And I'm keeping an open mind as to the problem that you're trying to solve. If you can relate it to energy, energy utilization, materials utilization, climate change, anything you want, if you can convince me it's a big enough problem and you're passionate about it, that's fine. Of course, we need to have some engineering solutions, so you need to think ahead a little bit, okay? And the purpose of this effort, and about half your grade will depend on this, is for you to gain the experience of working in a startup and innovating. And I think it's very, very important as technologists and engineers for us to address these problems, not only address the technical problems, but figure out how to make it real in the real world, okay? And I, again, I didn't have a class like this when I was a student, and I'm hoping that you can get that experience at the end of the semester. Um, and we'll go through it in some detail. Uh, I have gone through this. I've started several companies and failed and succeeded and so on. So I can give you lots of personal experience here, but you'll also have lots of guest speakers and panelists and so on because some of this class will be on Zoom and actually everything will be re uh, recorded. We have, we are fortunate to have speakers from all over the world actually, okay? So that's, an, that's something you can take advantage of. Before I jump in, are there any questions? And don't be shy. <laughs> we are a relatively small group. Wait, why is this not working? Sorry. Okay, there we go. Okay, we are gonna meet here as we know, uh, but, and Tuesday, Thursdays, invitations should be sent from Canvas. So first of all, all of you, even those who are here in person need to know the Zoom invitation, Zoom link, because some of these lectures will be completely remote because of my travel schedule and because there are guest speakers who are probably not here, okay? So just be aware of that. Um, office hours. So we're going to uh, use Slack. Uh, how many of you know who what Slack is? That's probably, okay, any of you have used it? Okay, Slack is uh, just a different version of Discord, as a few might know what Discord is. Simply a chat program. It's really nice because it allows you to interact very easily, very quickly and so on. And uh, my labs on Slack, we, you know, Ikata and Amartya are both in my lab. 
you know, I don't see them very often in person, but we talk almost every day on Slack. This class has been on Slack for a couple of years and it works really well. What does that mean? That means you can, instead of sending me an email, if you have a concern, you can message me on Slack and I will respond to you very quickly. Okay. And you can post your homework uh, assignments on Slack if you want. Of course, you can also email it. You can post it on Canvas. I don't care as long as you get it in. Uh, yeah, and you can ask questions. You can have discussions. You can make your own rooms so your teams can discuss even without me seeing it. Uh, it looks like this. So, whoops, did I close out? I guess I closed out of Slack, so let's find it. And the reason I want to show you is because you're going to get an invitation from me to join this line. So that's what it looks like. Optics for Energy. There's no one on it right now except the link to the Zoom. I'm going to add you all. So those of you who don't drop the class, at the end of this week, I'll send an email to your uh, email from Canvas with an invitation to Slack. So join. You don't have to. It's not mandatory, but it will make your life a lot easier just from the communication perspective. So you know, this is my lab. So for example, I just sent the link to the Zoom meeting to Ikata RTA, easy to do. Okay, now let's come back here. Um, again, if you have any questions or concerns, just let me know. We don't have a textbook in this class. Uh, everything will be provided online both on my lab website, which will be mirrored also on Canvas. Again, if you have any questions, just message, email me or message me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so that's the, my lab website, lons.utah.edu. And we'll go through it quickly, but you can access the class, all the materials for the class there as well as Canvas. So for some reason, you're not on campus and you don't act, you can't get access to Canvas, you can always go there. It will be mirrored, so they're the same. Okay, and, and we'll go through that soon. Um, any questions before I jump in? Yeah, go ahead. It's totally up to you. I'm completely flexible, but I'll go over the schedule. It's a good question, so let me repeat the question. The question is, do you need to really come to class? Oh, guess like. Yeah, I would say uh, you don't have to, actually. It's a good point. You don't have to. But I will go through the schedule carefully. Some of them, you do have to be here if you are taking the in-person version. But some of them, of course, if something happens and everything gets shut down, then we have to do it remotely like we did last, last year. But let's hope that doesn't happen. But, uh, and, but many of the lectures, you are welcome to take it at home. I, I, I'm not particularly strict about it. Of course, you know, in class, we're going to do some exercise and stuff, which is a little hard to do at home. So just be aware of that as well. Okay. Anyway, when we go through the schedule, it will become a little clearer. So what are we trying to do? We are, we want to understand optics. So that's kind of the first deal. Of course, we have all learned optics since middle school or something like this. I have a daughter in middle school, and I know they're starting with photons and energy and things like that. So we are going to have to understand some basic concepts there. But since we are engineers, of course, we are going to apply these basic concepts into some realistic things like designing lenses or designing solar concentrators or designing solar desalination systems or whatever. Okay, that's the goal. And so the science and engineering of light, but of course, light is very broadly applicable, right? Lighting here or projectors or my LCD screens, your phones, whatever, right? Everything has light. But we want to kind of focus on generation and utilization of energy, but I'm going to keep a very broad, open mind on what that means. In other words, if you come up and tell me, okay, you have a, uh, the problem you want to solve, let's say I'm talking about the project, uh, project uh, projects. Uh, let's say you come and tell me the problem you want to solve is you want to come up with a method to uh, improve the crop yield for um, alfalfa farms. Um, of course, it's related to energy, right? Because uh, alfalfa farms, for instance, take up a lot of water. So 
if you can make them more efficient, use less water, that, that's a valid, valid project. And again, I'm just throwing out some ideas, but not, I, have, I know nothing about it, but I'm just saying, if you can come up with some technological solutions to that problem, that is also fine. And you have to convince your teammates to work on it as well. Okay, so anyway, I'm, I'm gonna keep a broad open mind on these things. Okay, uh, what are the learning objectives? As I mentioned at the very beginning, my objective is really not to um, penalize you because you didn't do a particular homework or uh, you know, your midterm, you didn't write the final answer or whatever. I really don't care. I want to know that you can think through the problem. This is the most important thing, okay? Um, of course, we want to understand some of the fundamentals. When I say understand the fundamentals, I want you to gain intuition, not necessarily just plug in some equation. Intuition, back of the envelope stuff, okay? And I think as engineers, we're good at it. So let's, let's build on that strength. And of course, then after that, we want to apply our knowledge to innovate. So create new ideas that are practical, high impact and commercializable, very important because you can come up with uh, crazy ideas, which uh, may not be realistic. But I want you to not only think about the crazy idea, which is good. I want you to kind of think about crazy ideas. I'll talk about it. I want you to think about how do you make it real, real in the real world. And that's a good exercise because it allows you to give constraints to think about. As engineers, we're very good at thinking in constraints. It's just another design constraint. Okay, and, we'll, and I'll, I'll kind of emphasize that. I'm very excited about what you all come up with. I should tell you personally, this class is a lot of fun because all of you have lots of different perspectives. When you work in teams, you come up with really crazy, crazy innovations. And that's the most fun part about this class to me. I learn a lot from all of you. So I hope you will keep it up. I have high hopes. Um, finally, I, I also want us to be aware of technologies that are coming in the horizon. So how are we gonna do this? We have a few lectures, we'll talk about that. But more importantly, I will post papers and news articles and things like that that are coming. In fact, I already have one, if you're interested now, go over it on the website. So take a look at them. They're interesting and exciting and there's lots of really, really cool stuff happening, really crazy stuff happening around the world because of course it's a big problem, right? This is the existential threat to our generation, if I may be a little melodramatic. Okay, uh, specific topics. We're gonna think about optical design and hopefully gain some understanding on this and can be both imaging and non-imaging optics. And we'll talk about what that means later on in the next uh, few weeks. We'll talk a little bit about thermodynamics of so solar thermal and photovoltaic devices. I know some of you are from not from ECE, uh, material scientists and mechanical engineers. You will be very familiar with it. For the electrical engineers like me, you won't be so familiar with it, but turns out, Optics, which is actually a branch of electrical engineering, uh, is optical engineering, is intimately linked to thermodynamics. It's something we don't think about very much, but you have actually seen this in your first year um, physics classes. Maybe you haven't been taught in that way, but hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll see it in that perspective. Um, we'll also think about novel approaches to light management and photovoltaics devices. In other words, what can we do before the light actually enters a solar cell to improve the performance of the solar cell. A simple example. We'll think about these kinds of problems. And of course, emerging areas, as I mentioned before. And finally, like I said, roughly half the class will focus on entrepreneurship. But entrepreneurship with the focus from the techn technological perspective, right? It's not a business class. And you know, I, I, I don't know enough about business to really teach that. But we want to, as engineers, it's very, very important for us to at least understand the language the business person will talk. And, and there's a very practical reason for this, by the way. When you all go out and work in the real world, and some of you are already doing this, you talk to your bosses or teams, they have very different metrics, right? They have a metric, uh, customer, customer acquisition costs, or uh, you know, what's a gross revenue, or earnings before income and taxes, or whatever, right? There's all kinds of things. At, at least I want you all to have some appreciation of how that affects the product development, which is of course where we are going to approach this whole thing from, right? because we're engineers. 
Okay, so before I jump into grading, let's see, are there any questions? <laughs> okay, so grading, um, I know you're all very interested in this. So I should emphasize, first of all, that, um, uh, how do I say, it? grading is important because I need to know how you're doing and I need to do a grade, but it's not the most important thing. It's lower priority for me, as I said before. I'm not, my goal is not to penalize you. I want all of you to get an A, okay? That's not a bad thing in my class. So keep that in mind. But the grading is very specific. So I want you to understand what we are gonna do, okay? It's all fixed. So first of all, there's a midterm. And the schedule, by the way, is completely fixed. You can go to the website and see it for the entire semester. So if you're going on vacation, make sure you don't miss the midterm if you're gonna take the in-person section. It's on October 7th. Now, if you are going to miss it and it's unavoidable, just talk to me. I'm relatively flexible, okay? So just, just communicate, that's all. So 20% is on the, based on the midterm and it'll cover everything until October 7th. We'll go through the schedule. Uh, the rest is based on team-based projects. So we have five team presentations. So for those who, of you here, you will actually be making a team presentation here, just like here, here in class, okay? And that will be graded. We'll go over what that means. Um, yeah, and that's 10% each. And the first one is due September 9th, just so you can be prepared. We'll talk about what they are in a, in a little bit. And then we have almost weekly assignment, not, not necessarily every week, but quasi every week. And they're total 30% of the grade. The first one's due next week, 26. Uh, actually 26, this, is that? No, that's Thursday, so yeah, in two days. But that's a very simple assignment, I'll show you. Uh, and for those of you who are doing the IBC and online sections, you don't have the midterm, you have everything else and the, and the grading percentage is slightly different, but you can read about it. Any questions about grading before I go on? No, okay. The midterm will actually be in person, assuming things don't get shut down. If they get shut down, we'll do it remotely like we did last year. But for now, it'll be. And I don't expect you to be able to do huge amounts of math or algebra or anything like that. That's not the purpose of the class. So, so keep, also keep that in mind. I really want you to think intuitively and hopefully come up with solutions. Okay, so let's look at the schedule. So a couple of things to keep in mind. All lectures will be also on Zoom, like I said, and I'm recording the lecture. I'll be posted on Canvas as well. Probably the same day. I, you know, it might take a day. I don't know exactly when we'll post it. It might be tonight or it might be tomorrow. But if you're concerned, just send me a message. Um, the canvas will be mirrored on my website there, as I said before. And yeah, check for announcements. So let's go over the schedule then. So I'm gonna get out of this, go to the website. So it's under this tab, courses. If you go to the first one, you'll see that. So you can see the announcements here. That'll be at the very top. So, okay, I have two announcements, basically. I posted a link to an interesting webinar. So I, I will post a bunch of things. You're welcome. These are not mandatory, of course. Welcome to watch it. This is an interesting webinar on photonics entrepreneurship. Might be relevant to some of you. M worth uh, attending. It's free. Uh, almost everything I'll post will be free, so. Um, this one is Europe-centric, but generally applicable, I would say. Uh, and then whatever I talked about so far is all here, the syllabus and grading, all kinds of details. So you can go through all that, university policies. Okay, now we wanna talk about the schedule. So today, my uh, hope is to give you an overview of the class, go over the schedule and talk a little bit about some simple ideas. Okay, we'll, hopefully we'll get to it. Then, on Thursday, we're gonna talk about possible project topics. Now, the reason for uh, uh, allocating an entire lecture to this is I want you to start thinking about problems. Okay, this is really the first thing you really need to think about. Um, actually, the first thing is the assignment, assignment one. So like I said, this assignment is due on Thursday. 
very simple. All you have to do, if you already have people you work well with, suggest them to me, you wanna to work together, send me a message, um, email, Slack, whatever. I'll send all the invitations on Slack today, I guess. Um, you can also choose a team name if you wanna be, uh, be creative, just so we, we have a way to kind of um, uh, refer to you. So, you know, last few years, students get kind of, have come up with fun names and creative things. So anyway, that's this first assignment. So everyone has to do it and it's two and a half percent of the grade. So just a small percentage, but so it'll force you to do it. Okay, uh, for project topics, I'm gonna go over a bunch of things. Some of this is here, by the way, I should point out the PDF of the lecture notes are here. So you can click it and you get everything that I'm gonna talk, I'm talking today. And I will post them every week, probably the same day or day before or something like that. So you already have it. Um, I also posted a bunch of interesting problems and articles. Welcome to quickly peruse them. Might be too long, so you don't need to read all of it, but read through them because they're really interesting. And it'll give you ideas and things to work on. So let me highlight a few things that I'll talk more on Thursday. Look at this, what's on the moon challenge? What are we trying to do? We want to establish a permanent base on the moon. How do we want to generate power? Big problem. How do we get the stuff there? Right? How do, what do we do? What kind of efficiencies? Do, do, do we want to have solar concentration? Do we want to have um, a nuclear reactors or something else, right? So there's a big, big problem. NASA has an interesting challenge there. So something to think about. Of course, water. We know water is a big problem for us. The problem for, I think something like 30% uh, of humanity. A big, big problem, right? All kinds of really interesting things, and we'll talk more about it. Uh, and, I, and I'll come back to that, but let's go through the schedule. Then uh, next week, we're gonna talk about geometrical optics, uh, which is the science and engineering of how you design optical imaging systems, things like glasses or camera lenses and things like that. So there are two lectures and there will be a, some example problems and there will be problems that which is the follow, uh, following week. Then we'll talk a little bit about uh, solar radiation. And then your first assignment is September 9th. I'll talk about what that means. That's the literature review, but we'll talk more about it. Then the following week, we'll talk about non-imaging optics. So by the end, and, and then we'll talk about optical ray tracing, which is how do you use software to do the design for you or analysis for you. And you all have, as part of this class, will have access to a free license to something called Code 5 and Light Tools, which is typically a very, very expensive piece of software, but you'll all have access to it. It is installed in the Kate Lab and the cut that will also go through it that week. And we have actually a guest lecture by Mary Kate, Dr. Mary Kate from Synopsis, who's an expert on this design software. So I expect you all to at least play around with it uh, and hopefully use it for your project. To analyze your systems, whatever you design. So, uh, so by the end of September, you would have a, I mean, it's kind of compressed, but you will have a good idea of optical engineering and how to apply it. Yeah, that's my hope, so keep that in mind. And then we'll jump right into thermodynamics, um, some basic thermodynamics. And then September 30th, we have your second presentation on your team innovation. And there are a couple of, uh, one assignment I missed here. And I, I will, by the way, you don't have to remember all this. I will keep reminding you what's happening. But we have some assignments here. So for example, define the problem statement and it's due September 21st, something like that. And these are simple. I just need one page. Define your problems, less than one page, actually. So really, really think about what you want to do. Uh, we'll go through it in a bit more detail, right? So, okay, let's go through this quickly. And then we have the midterm. We have a review on the 5th and then the 7th, we have the actual midterm. Then we have fall break. We come back from, so when we come back from fall break, we'll just jump into entrepreneurship. So we're gonna start with something called the business model canvas. This is a tool that we will actually, this is an example of a class that you actually have to be here or it should be best if you're here because we're going to do a practice. We're going to actually write stuff in little groups, okay? It's a tool that allows you to think about how to take an innovation 
and bring it into the real world. It's something I wish I knew when I was in your shoes. And it's extremely useful, I would say. Uh, and then October 21st, we have the third presentation. We'll talk about what that means shortly. Um, then, I, then after this, we're gonna talk about a very specific topic. So optical design, uh, op optical design for recycling or optics and recycling. What, is, what does that mean? Recycling, of course, is a huge problem. I don't know if you saw there was a month ago, there was a, an article, I think in uh, Salt Lake Tribune, or I, I can't remember. One of, one of the local newspapers about a new, completely new municipal recycling center here. And the big challenge we have is because now China is not going to accept recycling materials that are not sorted properly. And this is a huge problem because sorting materials is incredibly challenging. And it's a problem that optics is addressing. And we'll talk a little bit about that. That's also an interesting project, by the way, for a team. Uh, anti reflection coatings. So then, of course, we'll jump into solar cells because although this is an optics class, I want you to have some basic understanding of the physics and the semiconductor physics of solar cells. Many of you probably already seen this, but hopefully, we'll go in a little bit deeper. And then, by the way, we'll have videos like this embedded into the website so you can also watch it. This one, uh, the link is broken. Uh, then we have some technology commercialization panel discussions. Uh, my goal here is really to get in. Of course, at the University of Utah, we are one of the top schools for entrepreneurship. There's lots and lots of companies. All of you are incredibly creative. Come up with lots and lots of things that are spun out of here. We want to take advantage of that. There are lots and lots of resources available to you as a student at the U. Things like, how do you file a patent? How do you find patents? Uh, is it important to file a patent? <laughs> Uh, you know, how do you form a company? Things like that, right? All the legal stuff. All of this is available to you. You can get advice. So we're going to invite folks from what used to be called the University of Utah Technology Venture Commercialization Center. Nowadays, it's called the Pivot Center. They'll come in. I, I think that might be on Zoom, but uh, Paul uh, Corson and Mary Albertson will lead a panel discussion about all this stuff, but not only that, we're also going to have a bunch of entrepreneurs, mostly local entrepreneurs, folks who have actually started companies, sold them, go through their experience. This last year uh, was the first time I tried it. And this was extremely um, useful, I think, for the students because you get to see what people have actually struggled through. Okay, and many of them are engineers, not all. Okay. Of course, we're going to intersperse with some technical stuff. So we're gonna talk about luminescent concentrators, but which by the way, uh, I, when we talk about it, it's, it's an interesting topic because it's something Facebook uh, uh, Labs is working on as well. And I will highlight some of that work. Um, then we have an assignment there, we'll talk more later. Measurement approaches, then light trapping, light extraction. So light trapping is an important technology. I won't talk much about it right now, but. We'll get into it later. Then uh, the, the, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, this is important. I know many of you might be traveling, so you should let me know beforehand. Right now, my plan is to have a demo day. What does that mean? That means you would have hopefully built something or have some nice wire grid model or simulation to show what it is that you'll work for in September, October, and November. <laughs> Okay, so if you are going to be out of town, make sure you plan with your teammates and let me know. Uh, we can move things around, but not by much. Uh, and then uh, number 30th, we have a, a guest to lecture from VentureWell. VentureWell is an organization that helps university students like yourself commercialize technologies coming out of labs or things that you'll come up with into the real world. And it's a national organization. They have networks all over the country. And we are lucky to have one of the directors uh, present. And the advantage of that is that you get to, put, if you're excited about something, you get to apply to something called a seed fund, which, I'll, which uh, gives you a little bit of money to actually pursue your technology, which might be kind of interesting for some of you to try. And not only that, it allows also to plug into a nationwide network of uh, student entrepreneurs uh, around the country uh, from all the, all the top schools. And finally, uh, actually not finally, I should say December 2nd, we have a very special guest, uh, 
uh, Martin Hermetsweiler. Uh, he's a friend of mine and um, he's German. He was exactly, maybe like some of you who are grad students, as a PhD student, he worked at, uh, in Karlsruhe Institute of Technology on a something like a 3D printing technology. It has a lot of optics in it, which is why he's going to give a talk. He took that, he spun that company out from his PhD lab, worked on it for about 10, 12 years, slogged through really hard times. Uh, I remember having a beer with him <laughs> where he was pretty dejected. And very recently, he's obviously very successful. We have one of his tools uh, in the nanofab here, actually two of his tools, I think. His company was uh, acquired by a larger conglomerate, so he's very successful now, and um, he's going to give us a presentation about his story. Again, hopefully it'll inspire you. In the last week, uh, we're going to touch back on some research in my lab, which is spectrum splitting. It'll be interesting to talk about it later. And then the last day of class, we have the final presentation. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to mention that some of these lectures are completely remote. So I noted them. Let me see, how did I note? Yeah, so for example, you can see I noted it here. So just note them. Uh, you're welcome to come to class if you want, but you can also just join remotely as well. And part of the reason is, for instance, I might be at a conference or something and then I, have, I can be here, so I have to do it. Uh, let's see. Oh, you are welcome to come here because Sikata will be here and she will also broadcast it, but you can also just do it from home. Okay, uh, any questions about the schedule? And then I'll move back to, whoops. No, no questions? Okay. Um, so everything is there, so you can go look at it and plan your time, things like that, right? Okay. Then let's talk a little bit about the assignments and the projects. So the projects, uh, my hope is to assign the teams as soon as possible so you have time to work on this. So my goal was August 31st, which is next Tuesday, but sooner the better. So for those of you who are not planning to take the class, just let me know. You're welcome to, by the way, be an observer. I have no problems. But if you don't plan to take the class for the semester, let me know because otherwise, uh, it, uh, once I assign the teams, it's really hard to kind of juggle things around because there's a lot of, a lot of us here. So just send me a message. Um, for those of you who want to work in, uh, so by the way, my philosophy about assigning teams, I like to put folks from different backgrounds together because it provides different perspectives on the same problem. So if you're both in the same lab doing particular kind of research, that's not a good, although you might like work together, I would say that's not necessarily a great team member. But if you can complement each other, bring different perspectives, I think that's always useful. So that's my hope. So that's the way I will assign the teams. But if you really have a great friend that you wanna work with, just let me know. Okay, I'm flexible. But if you don't let me know, then I won't know. Yeah. So we have to choose the team or determine the team name by this Thursday. Uh, suge suggest team members. <laughs> you don't, I, I assign the team. You get to suggest. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. And the team names also you can suggest. Yeah. The name is uh, for fun, so you you guys you get once I assign the team, you guys can decide together. The the reason I mentioned it is because that way I know if you have a great colleague that you work together just because, or you know your your schedules are perfect. You know you can both work at nine p.m. because the kids have gone to bed or whatever, right? So I'm I'm very flexible about those things. Just let me know. But that that's my purpose of that assignment. So it's important once you have the team that you guys and girls pick time together to work, right? This is very important. And it doesn't mean you have to meet in person. I would do everything on Zoom or Slack or and nowadays it's so, it's so easy. So you don't need to commute anywhere, okay? So, but that's important that you're all uh, kind of spending a little time virtually at least. Uh, making progress. 
Okay, the project deliverables, uh, the five team presentations, the periodic team assignments, and uh, you can submit them via email, Slack, or Canvas. Like I said, I'm flexible. All of you will be graded together, so just be, keep that in mind. And if there's a problem, like someone's not pulling their weight, just let me know. As it's happened very rarely in the past, but not very common. Most of you, I think, are. Uh, well, first of all, most of you, I hope, are here, not just for the grade, but just hopefully to gain something at the end of the semester. <laughs> so don't take it just for the sake of the grade, I would say. You have to put in work. Oh, assignment one, yeah, do on Thursday, uh, suggest team members and choose, uh, choose or suggest, I should say, suggest team name. If you have some topics that you're extremely passionate about, let's say you want to work on, uh, I don't know, I, I, I like farming, so, you know, making avocado farms better. Whatever, just tell me, so this is your opportunity, okay? But you, but telling me by itself is not enough because you also have to convince a couple of other people to, to also work on that problem. Try to find a problem that you're passionate about because it's a lot of work. If you're not uh, excited about it, then it's just uh, not that fun. Some example topics. Uh, this again, I'm not dictating topics to you, but these are just examples that we'll talk about. And I like very simple technologies. So I'll start with the solar cooker. We'll talk a little bit about it today. Water is very important, as we all know. So water pasteurization, water desalination, refrigeration is a big problem, right? How are you going to as the world warms and lot of lots of the place don't. Lots of places in the world don't have access to electricity. How are we going to refrigerate? Uh, daylighting, we'll talk about what that is. I uh, had a couple of teams work on this uh, two years ago and they did an amazing, really clever idea. Uh, solar water heating, photovoltaics, uh, optics and recycling, others you propose, whatever. Um, the things to think about as technologists, of course, technology it should be front and center. So we need to think about the technological solution to these problems. But I also want you to, like I said, the second half of the grade depends on entrepreneurship. This means that I also want you to think about these other things. Cost, okay? If you're going to market this to the developing world and folks afford it, if they cannot afford it, who can afford it? Can the NGOs afford it? Can the governments afford it? So the different ways to think about it. And all of these choices will, of course, iterate back into a product and technology design and choice. That iteration is what I want you to gain experience on. Okay, uh, durability. Um, you know, will it last? Uh, uh, you know, will it will it last in a humid climate? Will it last if it's super cold or super hot? Uh, storage space requirements. Um, you know. Are you designing something for a hiker? So that just to be lightweight, compact, so you have to carry it. Or a soldier, uh, or does it have to go into space, right? All kinds of requirements. Cultural factors, we'll talk a little bit about that. Ease of use, uh, maintenance and things like that. Uh, climate conditions, as I mentioned before. Most importantly, business model has to be sustainable. This, this is the whole purpose of the second half of the class. You need to think about ways this can actually be done, okay? Maybe you'll go ahead and do it in the future, but this is your opportunity to kind of pretend that this will be real and or uh, figure out and make mistakes on how to make it real, okay? At least that's my hope. Oops, I see, uh, are you monitoring the chat? <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um, if you need me, just uh, shout. Um, presentation, so let's talk a little bit uh, in detail about the 50% of the grade. Okay, well, I'm going a little slow, so I gotta speed up. Um, presentation one on September 9th is a literature review. We're gonna discuss, um, so what does that mean? That means, you. first of all, next week, once the teams are assigned, you can pick a topic, or I'll assign a topic to you or a field to you, let's call it. Okay, it may not be a particular uh, problem. Now, I would prefer if you pick it because then you are more excited, you have ownership uh, than me trying to dictate. 
then once you have that field, let's call it solar cooking for the sake of argument, you're going to look at the landscape of what's out there, okay? What are the advantages and disadvantages and comparisons between the existing technologies, okay? An overview of the existing technologies. And I want you to focus on what are the problems with existing technologies? Because that will then feed into the next assignment because you want to pick the problems. But the first assignment is really gain an understanding of the field you're going to work on. And of course, none of, us, none of you will be familiar with it. So this just means doing literature review, literature search, internet search, talk to people, okay? Um, the, the, the presentations themselves, the length of the presentation is only, it depends on how many teams there are because we have to fit them within the time of the class. Typically they're about eight minutes to 10 minutes with three, four minutes of Q and A. So very short, but I want, and, and this is also important because you need to be able to explain things in a really clear, succinct manner. It's one of the hopefully skills you learn. Okay, uh, going forward, so it's roughly once a month, you can see, right, where it's coming. The 9th, September 30th, you'll talk about the innovation, which means that in the first presentation, you've identified the problem, and the rest of the next three weeks, you're going to work on the innovation. And here is where you're going to do brainstorming and come up with bold, creative, crazy ideas, take risks, of course, minding physics. Okay, so there you're going to throw out, and I'll give you more detailed instructions as we go along, but typically you're gonna talk about your top three solutions that you come up with. Of course, by then you don't know everything in optical engineering, but that's okay. Okay, do your best. October 21st, then you're going to dive deeper into the technical details of this solution, okay? This means you're going to do simulations, you might, do some wire grid models in CAD or even in actual physical models and uh, analysis. And we have some assignments that will support you along this way. Then on uh, the, the week of Thanksgiving, we have the demo day, which is basically you're going to present your final result. And we'll probably invite other folks to come attend because it'll also be on Zoom, like I said. And I'll probably get feedback from them on the grades as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Here, well, what does this entail? Iterative design, simulations, analysis, if you have a prototype. You know, if you're really handy, you wanna build something. I've had teams build things. Uh, in fact, uh, I had a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, they had a couple of prototypes and we went outside. It was a nice, beautiful, sunny day. They put it outside and they were doing a, a solar, um, uh, what was it? Pasteurization. So they were using uh, dirty water, somehow distilling it in a very efficient way and collecting it. And they showed a really interesting thing. By the way, if you don't have demos, that's also okay. Lots of teams also just present videos. So for example, I had some teams actually last year because of COVID just built stuff in their garage and they did some experiments outside. I think I had a team who did solar refrigeration and they did some interesting experiments. But again, these are ideas, you don't, you don't, you're not required to do this. Let's say if you are so inclined, do it. Final presentation on the last day of class will be the commercialization and we'll talk more about it later. For those of you who are doing the IBC or online sections, you're going to present uh, videos, not, not uh, real-time presentations. Uh, any questions about presentations before I go on? Yeah, go ahead. So if we have a topic that is not listed, uh, certainly submitted, and there's nobody else to go about it. You, you, you know, you're on Canvas. First of all, on Slack, you can message other people. You, so there is a general channel on Slack. So there's something called, wait, can't read. Do you see that? You can post your problem <laughs> or post uh, some topic you're interested in. This is like a discussion board. So you, have, you can talk to each other as much as you want on here. Um, oops, sorry. Oh. 
but you do have to convince other people. So if it's a very niche problem, you know, try to find folks who are excited about it. And also talk to me, you know, I mean, not in person, just on Slack or email. Okay. Uh, assignments. So assignments are uh, a bit more, um, a bit smaller, the percentage. So first of all, you know, first one is simple, like I said, and it's due on Thursday. By the way, these assignments, you can email to me or just send it to me on Slack or submit on Canvas, whatever you want, doesn't matter, okay? Email is perfectly fine. My email's on the website and also on Canvas. Assignment two will be a problem set. So we'll have some problem sets on geometrical optics and it's due September 7th. And it's 5% of the, of the grade. So assignment three is you define the problem statement which will help you in your next presentation. So I'm trying to support you along the way so you don't have to do extra work, okay? And then uh, define the solution statement. These are less than one page. Don't go more than one page. Very clearly, if you have figures, that's fine. Really short, clear. Um, define simulation model and preliminary simulations report. This can be a little bit longer, up to three pages because you have results, some figures and whatever description. Uh, business canvas iteration, you don't know what this is. We'll come to this later on, it's fine. It's easy. I mean, it's not necessarily easy, but it's very useful. Uh, then I have a little thing called planning for Vigrid model and, and uh, demo. This is also like a very short report, like one page, something like that on what you're going to do, kind of have everything planned out. Again, to help you for the demo day. And finally, the business canvas final version, we'll talk about that later. Okay, uh, yeah, right now. So Canvas and commercialization. Uh, Canvas, uh, I won't talk about it today because it is a little bit detailed. We'll actually do it in class. Okay, something you actually have to do. Yeah. Oh, good question. Yeah, the question is, does the team submit the assignments or each person submit it? So that's, okay, actually, let me go back. I forgot. <laughs> I think it depends on the assignment. So for instance, assignment one, everyone has to submit it because you don't have a team yet. And assignment two, everyone has to submit it because it's the problem set. I think everything else you submit as a team. So one person submitted from the team. Just have to make sure that I know, I will know who you are because I will be assigning the team. So. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, another question, no, okay. So the other thing I should say, the you know, um, uh, on the commercialization the submission, which is the very last presentation, you're going to also do what's called a video pitch, very very short pitch, and we'll talk more about it later. It's kind of like an elevator pitch. Uh, I don't want us waste too much time right now, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about all this stuff, like what are the basic sections of the business plan, things like you know, what's the market opportunity, what's the go to market strategy, what does that even mean or you know, do a market and industry analysis, risk economics to team, things like that. We'll, we'll talk more about it, so don't worry about it too much. Uh, we are gonna try to do this. I'm not sure how well it will work this semester. We're gonna try to assign a commercialization mentor, most likely someone who's done it before or someone who has some experience with it to each team. You're gonna meet with a commercialization mentor maybe twice in October, I'm thinking, or November you know, for, again, remotely, just to get feedback on your on your work and some guidance. This is my additional advantage, uh, uh, resources for you, but it's, it's still in the planning stage. Okay, anyway, I, I'm still working on it, but I, the point I want to make is I want to give you lots and lots of resources, so take advantage of it, and hopefully I'll remind you along the way. 